Right, well, I want to talk about Tatsu again, and uh, I'm, I know the rules now, basically. I haven't never played a game, but I know. I think I know the rules, apart from maybe a couple of slight pointers, which are um, uh, finite details, which people have been asking questions on. Um, I've explained it in the earlier little video to you, Ted, and... Uh, this is a book of rules that I've got here, and um, as I say, it's a game played with dice, and it's a race and chase game. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll explain the board first before I do anything else, um, before I do the pieces or anything else. And the board is basically a series of circles inner circles like these ones on the inside they're darker circles and then they're in segments and this there's, there's, there's um there's 24 segments all together and in the segments there's there's two two circles in each segment there's two circles so there's 48 circles and what you play is on the, the, the initial 24 circles on the inside and you start from these ones here one two and three, one, two and three. And what you do is you work on the black ones, because these are black and those are white. On the black you, you, you work clockwise this way around. And on the white you work anti-clockwise the, uh, the other way around, this way around. On the same, on the same circles in the same segments. Um, there is a special provision for the outer circle, which I'll explain as I go along later on. Um, this part here is called the tray. And it's a wooden area where the pieces are held initially. I'll show you how they go. Normally they show you this and they cover everything up, but I'm not going to cover everything up because you can't see what, what the video is going on. And the pieces are played down there initially. And then they go to this part, which is a yellowy part. Um, and it's, it looks like the end of a mat, and it is in fact a mat. It's uh, the latter portions of a mat, and the same on the other side. This has got a black thing ring around it, and this has got a white, white uh, things around it. So that you know that that's the white side, and this is the black side. And the two dragons in the middle are a bit confusing, but there's a white dragon and a, a black dragon, and the black dragon shows you the way to move by the. The shape of its its tongue going around like this that way and the other one goes the other way so it, one goes one way and the other goes the other way into the same reference parts of the top circle of the segments um there's only a one other area which is we call it the dead zone here and here whereas um unlike um backgammon the pieces are cast off and they go back to the beginning. On this, they actually get killed off and they go out, out of the game altogether. Uh, and that's uh, that's done by one piece, one, one particular piece. Um, and this is the part where the pieces go when they're cast out and they, they, they return to the player. They go to this part here. So that's basically the board. Um, and players with two dice they're, they're, they're black dice they're just a normal uh, one to six on each, each face one to six on each face six sided dice and uh, I put the, the, the playing pieces in a little box uh, my playing pieces are, are slightly different from uh, the rest of the playing pieces I just put the dice to one side and um, there's nine playing pieces for each player And the white ones are actually white. I'll just put them over here. I'll just turn them over so you can give you a chance to get your breath and see what I'm doing. There's a lot to take in in the beginning, but it's quite a simple game once, you, once you've understood what all the bits and pieces are. So there are two red ones, three blue ones, and four green ones as in this case there are 
four green ones, three blue ones, and two red ones. And they're called stones, uh, dragon stones, in fact. And uh, you'll see that there are the same for each side. So he's got two black, two uh, the white's got two two reds, black's got two reds, uh, white's got three blue, black's got three blue, and uh, white's got four green and black's got four green. So they're exactly the same. Each side has got exactly the same pieces to play with. It's a two-player game, and uh, these pieces pieces initially are placed on the board. Uh, there are three green ones placed on the top of the line here by each player. And the rest of the pieces go to the tray. I'm just making them look tidy so as you can understand what's going on. You can put these in any matter, any manner you, you like. It makes no difference. And this is how the board is set up beginning for the beginning of play. Um, the pieces in play are the green ones only, and they're placed above the one, the two, and three. And this is part is where you come in. So the tree is where your pieces actually are, and this, they're then sent to the the mat, and then from the mat they're placed onto the playing area. And you get onto the playing area by throwing the dice. Um, in the in the, in the same case for for both players. Um, the initially this die this stone or dragon or dragon stone whichever you want to call it these are called vine vine stones vine dragons and what they do if 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 it, they can get one of their pieces like so on any other piece doesn't matter what piece it is it can be the same piece but as long as it's on the other side it will trap that piece until that piece can be released and it's released by losing one half of its dice. So if it threw a four, a six and a two, for instance, on white's ten, white could move, but he could only use half of the throw. He would lose one half of his power. So he'd move on one, two, and then he'd be released. And this one would spring into the position above, like so. And uh, that's it. That's all there is to that one, really. Not, nothing too technical about that. The second stone is the blue stone, and the blue stone is what they call um, the water dragon. And what the water dragon does, if you're on a, a position like this, and the water dragon uh, goes one, two, three, four, can jump to five and land behind you like that, what it does, it casts you off like so and returns you back to where you're in tray. And then it pushes itself onto the one above. So it's on the inner circle again. Um, so that's the blue one, or the water stone. The last one is the green one. Uh, sorry, the red one. And this is the fire stone. This one has got the most power. The others do entrapments and things like that. And assist you in moving to get where you want to go but this one actually actually kills um, so if you're on a, a on this square here on this space segment and he's on here and he throws a one two three four five or he's there and he can throw a six one two three four five six he will actually knock you off and put you into a, a dead zone and in the dead zone, you can't move. You're absolutely out of the game altogether, completely. And once he's done that, he'll move into that position. And uh, another thing is that if there are two pieces on any any square like this, any segment, sorry, and he throw, he's there, 
Brady's there and he goes one, two, three, four, five, throws a five. He cannot land on a double. If he throws five, he cannot land on a double. So if you're doubled up, which is a good thing on occasions, um, he cannot take you off. The only thing is, if you're doubled up like that, you have to move this one. Bef uh, sorry, you have to move this one before this one can move. So you've got to move along with this one. If you throw the dice and you throw three, one, two, three, you've got to release yourself. That's your own position, your own man. So you lock yourself in to a position. So you've got to use one of your throws to release it. And then this one can move. So if you th this one, if you throw a two and a six, he could move one, two, and then this can be released. One, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. Uh, one, two, then he could be released. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and go to there, like so. I hope that's, <laughs> I hope that's clear. <laughs> I'm terrible in, in instructor. Um, so that's the red one. Put them back in the initial positions again. If you manage to throw one, two, three, four, five or a six, and you're in this position, you've got two out like this, or here, five and a six, you can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Once you land on one of these here, a coloured segment, there's six of them. If you look, there's two green ones, two blue ones, and two red or orange ones. I'll call them red, but call them whatever you like. You can call them all sorts of rude names in your own house, I suppose. Um, if you land there, it means that you're allowed to enter one of your pieces if you have that colour. Well, you've, I've got one green one left here. So I can enter it onto, from the tray onto the mat. And then I would have to wait another turn to throw. Oh, I'm not getting nothing to do, am I? Ah, throw one to, to get onto the thing. If they were both full, I couldn't get on there. You can't get on if it's full. But if there's a space at the bottom, you can get onto one. If there's nothing there, you go straight onto one. I don't know if that's all right for you. So if there's nothing there, you can go straight to zero on, and get onto the line. But if there's one there, you go onto the bottom one and wait till this one moves off before you can move. Um, well, you'd have to move this one first before that one could move, sorry. Yeah, you'd have to move that one because that's the rule, isn't it? I just explained that you've doubled up and captured yourself with a vine. Um, so that's it. If you'd landed on, if you if you could land on, um, say for instance, you're coming down this way, and you could land on a red, you would bring a red into play, and then you'd have to wait until you threw the number to get that one. I've thrown three. I can't get on there. It's unfortunate I didn't throw a two, I could have gone straight into there, but I've got to go on to that one now and trap myself. So I've got to move this one before I can move this one. Hope that's clear. Um, so that's how you play the game. And all you do then is from that position, it, it, it's not really a difficult thing to play. The only thing is that when you throw the dice, you don't play a uh, four and a two. So by that I mean, for instance, if you'd got a four, thrown a four there, and white was in this position, you couldn't go from one, two, three, four, this position here and go one, two, three, four, because I've already told you that you can't land on a double square. And you've got to use the pieces individually. So you can go one, two, you can go one and then go one, two, three, four. That's allowed. But you can't go one, two, three, four. It's like backgammon. You can go one, you can move it one and then move it one two three and four if you want <laughs> you can do it that way um, um 
Yeah, even if it's your own, it makes no difference. Even if it's your own, it'll make no difference. If, if you've got your own there, it makes no difference. You can't, you still cannot go one, two, three and land on your own on the double. You can't land on the double square. But you'd be able to land on it if it was a single. And you'd land on the back there. But you wouldn't be able to move off until you move this one again. It isn't all that complicated, actually. I think it's. It, I'm getting on a bit. I'm getting on a bit now, and it's sometimes it's a bit confusing for me. But uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not really a center. It doesn't. It's not center, and it's not. Uh, they're going into. Um, Playing tournaments and things with this, they're trying to set up tournaments to play this game and things like this. I don't, I don't know how successful that's going to be. But anyway, uh, the idea is to, if you, if you can get all these, if you can get this player to have all his men in this condition or off the board or whatever you like, as long as he's got none in the playing area and none on his mat, you've won the game. And the other one is if you can knock three of these off, either three blue ones, two red ones, or four green ones, in any order, it makes no difference. If you knock the red ones or the blue ones or the green ones off, you don't have to knock two of each or one of each. You've got to knock one certain colour of each. And once you've done that, you've won the game as well. Either way. Um, and the game, I, should, I would imagine the game could go on quite a while, running and chasing and knocking and blocking and uh, the only two really killer tiles are the two the two red ones for each player because the vines up there they're an irritant the vines and these ones are certainly an irritant these ones that send you back to the, the, the playing area and the only play, way you can get back on is by um, landing on these colors not by throwing the dice but landing on these colors and then the, it's got to be a certain color so you've only got like two blues on one side, one green, and then two reds on the other and one green. So it, it, <laughs> I should imagine it's quite awkward. Anyway, I don't know what you think about that. Um, um, these are just the rules how you play it. Uh, and I've got the rules anyway, Ted. The rules are in here. And the, the comprehensive rules, I haven't altered them or changed them or anything. So if you want to write the rule, if you want to rule, I'll make the rules quite quickly. They're not, they're not a problem. And this is just to help if you want to, this is for me really as much as anybody else. Because I, I don't play the game, so when it comes to saying, oh, show us how you play that. And I say, I can't, I can't remember it. <laughs> I don't remember it. Anyway, I shall stop there and put the bits back in the box. Um, there was a little bit about um, the box that they had, which was a bit flimsy. And uh, I haven't made a box for it. All I've made is a box for the, the playing pieces. To put the playing pieces in, um, which I thought was worth having, instead of having having them rattle around, uh, I, I made a box to place all the pieces in. Um, like so, and it works quite well. And once they're quite easy, it's quite easy to put these away. Yeah. And that takes uh, 18 pieces quite happily. And a little box of the lid. So, and that's the pieces. And the board falls up. Falls up to nothing virtually. Uh, and the rules go with it. So, I'm going to place all that inside the little box. And make it look uh, reasonable. And then I'll show you what I've done when I've put it all inside a box. Anyway, Ted, I'll close. And I'm using, you can see I'm using my webcam, which isn't all that good a quality. But anyway, I'll stop there. I'll bring it on the way.